because it happened uh, totally unexpected. We uh, got from the uh, heads of the library of Council of Fulham that we cannot, uh, they didn't like what Marcus is talking about. So they, they told us that we cannot hold our events there because they are not happy with uh, his views. Uh, that's a flagrant uh, breach of uh, our rights in this country and uh, freedom of speech. And uh, we decided to ask uh, to change the place. And uh, Marco Gashic uh, helped us, and the church helped us uh, to uh, organize in this place. And we are very happy with that because uh, I think at, at the end of the day, the church is our home of all serfs, so why not? Uh, our guest, who is, uh, who is going to talk about uh, how Western countries look at Serbia and uh, who are our enemies and friends, is Marcus Podopoulos. Uh, I think that we all have uh, some um, idea of what he is doing. We could uh, go and see more about him on the internet. But what is the most important is that he talks what he believes in. Uh, very few people do that because uh, that's usually antagonize other people who are not very happy with <laughs> the news. But uh, uh, defending Serbs and talking about Serbs uh, and Serbia is uh, still uh, very tricky and very uh, unwelcome talk in this country. I believe that uh, this is going to unite us even more and that we, uh, after this event, that we shall uh, make our move to uh, stand by us as a community, as uh, never mind what we really believe in our where do we come from, which part of former Yugoslavia. We are all uh, the same. We are the Serbian people, and we have to understand that. That's the most important. Marcus is going to say a few more things about us. And please, uh, if you uh, say what you, I don't know how you, uh, would like to take your questions after that. Questions uh, uh, So that would be uh, really important that you ask also the uh, right questions. Dan, dame i gospodo, veliko mi je zadostvo da mogo da govorim danas pred vama. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and how honored I am to be speaking before you today. First of all, thank you to both the Serbian Orthodox Church of St. Sava and the Serbian Society for hosting this event. And also thank you to Vanya Tonic, uh, who came up with the idea for this event. Now, I'm going to talk to you today in a very candid and direct way, because Serbs are, by their very nature, a candid and direct people. <coughs> but also because I care tremendously for Serbia and its people. Indeed, my passion for the Serbs stems back to my childhood, and in my professional life, I have experienced numerous attacks on me by British national newspapers because of my unbreakable support for the Serbs. I also face other challenges in my professional life because of my resolve to expose the malicious lies which have been told by the West about the Serbs such as Srebrenica and Rajak. My commitment to the Serbian people is both historic and eternal. But before I commence with the thrust of my speech, I want to say that Serbia today, despite its terrible problems, and the problems are terrible, remains a great country with a great people, a great culture, and a great lifestyle. To be in Serbia is to experience the Serbian soul something that no words can truly describe. 
To be in Serbia is to experience a warmth and compassion that is not found in many other countries in the world. To be in Serbia is to enjoy the most important aspects of life, family, friends, and the love of life. To be in Serbia is to escape the money-oriented and materialistic culture of the West and all the suffering which materialism brings with it. And to be in Serbia is to be the Serbian people who are one of the most courageous, peaceful and tolerant whom you will ever meet with. And people who, throughout their history, have only ever fought for their freedom. But now I have to tell you something in unequivocal terms. Today, as I speak, Serbia is dying, and with it, the Serbian people. Because Serbia has a malignant cancer, and one which is growing in size and in intensity. The cancer is the pro-Western system that has been ruling Serbia for nearly 20 years now. In order for Serbia and the Serbian people to live, that system must be overthrown and destroyed. Anything short of that course of action fail to save Serbia. Are Serbia and the West friends or foes? The answer is simple. The West, which comprises the US, the UK, NATO and the European Union, constitutes an enormously dangerous enemy to Serbia and its people. The threat from the West to Serbia is the most dangerous that the country has faced in its history, equal, in my opinion, to the threat posed by the Nazis during their occupation of Yugoslavia. Today, Serbia is neither free nor independent. Serbia is under occupation. Serbia, again, is a colony. And today, Serbia's colonial master is the West. The West's control of Serbia differs greatly to the ways in which Serbia has been occupied over centuries. Whereas the Ottomans controlled Serbia through an army of occupation, the West's control is far less overt and is insidious because, with the exception of in Kosovo and Natopia, which today is a NATO protectorate, there is no Western army of occupation in Serbia. Rather, Serbia is under political, economic and cultural occupation by the West. The very foundation of Serbian statehood is being devoured by the West's modern-day form of colonialism just like how a cancer devours a person's body. And the devouring of Serbia by the West is only made possible by treacherous Serbs, who are the worst traitors that Serbia has ever known in its history. So when did Serbia become a colony of the West? Well, the date is 5th of October 2000. And how did that happen? through a Western-backed election campaign which involved the financing and training of an opposition which was collaborating with the US, the UK, NATO and the EU. As the repugnant Madeleine Albright said during the presidential election campaign in the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia in September 2000, and I quote, I want to see Milosevic out of power and the opposition in power before I myself leave office. Just think about those words from Albright, a twisted, hateful and poisonous human being who has helped to cause untold levels of pain and suffering to Serbs and who has preferred to Serbs as, quote, disgusting. Now, Serbia suffered tremendous economic hardships following the West's dismemberment of the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, the ensuing the ensuring Western sanctions on the newly created Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, comprising, uh, comprising Serbia and Montenegro, and the corruption under Slobodan Milosevic. So, I understand why Serbs voted for a change in September 2000, but they were deceived by the Western-backed opposition. <coughs> what those Serbs who voted against Mr Milosevic did not realise is that the people whom they were voting for were traitors who would, as soon as they took power, hand Serbia to their Western paymasters. Despite all of the problems facing Serbs during Mr. Milosevic's time in office, which were a result of poor leadership, but mostly because of the Western sanctions, Serbia was nonetheless an independent country that controlled its economy and all other vital sectors in the country and protected its culture. 
So, what happened to the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia in 1991 and 1992 was not the fault of Serbs, and the Western sanctions on Serbia was also not the fault of Serbs. But, and this is a very important but, what has happened in Serbia since the 5th of October 2000 is the fault of Serbs. By voting for that treacherous opposition, Serbs unwittingly handed Serbia's independence to the West. If Serbia, if Serbia is to regain its independence, Serbs will have to come to terms with that most brutal reality. I will, know, I will now turn to how Serbia is occupied by the West, by the West and has been since the catastrophic, uh, catastrophic event of the 5th of October 2000. The methods by which the West controls Serbia are, as I mentioned earlier on, economic, political and cultural. First, the West's economic occupation. Acting on the orders of Washington, London and Brussels, one of the first acts of the new Serbian elite after the overthrow of Mr. Milosevic was privatising Serbia's national industries and then selling these to companies in the West who then subsequently closed them down or, in some cases, the Serbian elite simply shut down industries. Factories which had been built under Tito and maintained by Milosevic, which had provided jobs and salaries to vast numbers of Serbs and which, in turn, had provided an important revenue for the, Ser for the Serbian economy, are today rusting hulks. So why did the West instruct its servile collaborators in Belgrade to do that? Because the West wanted to flood the Serbian market with its own goods so that it could capture the revenues for itself that had previously been enjoyed by Serbian industries. And that is exactly what has happened. When visiting shops in Serbia today, you overwhelmingly see American, British, French, German, Austrian, Italian, Spanish products, for example, whereas once you saw mainly Serbian products. Finding Serbian products is now a rarity because, as I just said, their manufacturers have either been closed down or they have gone out of business because they cannot compete with Western prices. So the West is, today, the dominant force in the Serbian market. Furthermore, a lot of Serbia's national resources are also controlled by Western companies who exploit these for their own financial gain. I must also point out that some of Serbia's national industries which were privatised and sold to Western companies are still operating today and producing products. But this is because the Western companies which own those factories use its Serbian workforce as cheap labour. In essence, Serb workers are being exploited by Western businessmen. Which takes me on to the situation concerning workers' rights in today's Serbia. Well, Serbian workers no longer have rights. Following October 2000, successive puppet governments of the West in Belgrade, from Kostunica to Tadic to Vucic, have repealed nearly all of the Tito-era employment legislation which guaranteed workers' rights. In today's pro-Western Serbia, most workers do not have contracts of employment, so they do not even have the most rudimentary of rights. Serbs can now, be, can now be dismissed by their foreign or Serbian employers for no reason whatsoever and they are not entitled to statutory sick pay or holiday pay. Bullying at the Serbian workforce is now rife, while salaries are depressingly low. Destroying workers' rights in Serbia has enabled the West to turn Serbia into a sweat house where Serbian workers are abused, exploited and neglected and in which Serbian companies make vast profits from. The destruction of the Serbian economy by the Serbian elite on the orders of Washington and Brussels has resulted in a brain drain, with many Serbs, especially young ones, leaving Serbia in the hope of finding a better life for themselves elsewhere. Indeed, over the last six years, 600,000 Serbs have left Serbia. That is a truly astonishing figure. And another consequence of the West's destruction of the Serbian economy is homelessness. People living rough on the streets in Belgrade, once, on, once unheard of in Serbia, is now a common sight. 
Now I will turn to the West's political occupation of Serbia. Tell me, would any of you in this room today meet with Hashim Tashi or Ramush Harijane in any context such as the future of Kosovo and Tokyo? No. Anyone? No. Why not? Never. They're traitors. They have worked against us. They're terrorists. 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 The Serbia's current president and prime minister have met with those two murderous criminals. And Dodik. And they've met with them on more than one occasion. The diabolical duo of Alexander Vucic and Anna Bernovic regularly meet with two men who are up to their necks in the blood of Serbian civilians, soldiers and police officers. Tashi and Haridine have turned the Serbian province of Kosovo and Tokyo into a hub for drug, gun, human and organ trafficking, a hub for Islamism, and an almost mono-ethnic region in which Serbs, Gypsy, Gypsies, Ashkelis and Goranis have fled for their lives in the face of US and UK supported Albanian pogroms. Yet despite that, the ruling Serbian elite are in regular contact with Tashi and Haridine. I will tell you why that is. Vucic and Brnovic are servants to the West, and because of these scoundrels have been, and because of this, these scoundrels have been told by their colonial masters in Washington and in Brussels that Serbia must recognise the illegal and illegitimate entity known as the Republic of Kosovo. The West wants to cement its hold over Serbia by bringing its minions in Belgrade and Pristina together. 20 years ago, would anyone here today have thought that a Serbian president or a Serbian prime minister would have sat down with representatives of the terrorist and organized crime ring known as the so-called Kosovo Liberation Army? Would any of you here today have thought that a Serbian leader would shake hands with people who posed for photographs with the severed heads of Serbian civilians or who adopted Serbs took them to Albania and harvested them for their organs. Well, that is exactly what has been happening because the West has political control over Serbia through traitors such as Vucic and Brnovic who intend to recognize Kosovo and Latokia as independent in order to ensure that they both remain in power and in order to ensure the constant flow of money into their bank accounts from their Western masters and that is how politics works. That's not a conspiracy theory. If you are in politics, you know that money is central. Vucic, for example, is doing everything within his power to distance Serbia from Kosovo and Latokia, the Serbian Jerusalem as we all know it is. Vucic is doing that by saying that Serbia is not legally bound by United Nations Council Resolution 1244 and by exploring the option of amending Kosovo's constitution to omit Kosovo and Matokia from it. Now let's turn to Tony Blair. How many of you in here would fly Blair to Belgrade and hire him as an advisor? No. No. No one? Why not? Yes, we could, because we could kill him and much more easily. Because he should be in the cave. Because he should be in the cave. Yes. Well, Vucic has flown him into Belgrade. Vucic has, Vucic has hired him as an advisor. The Serbian president has established a close relationship with Blair, who, along with Bill Clinton, spearheaded NATO's bombing campaign against Serbia for 72 days, causing the deaths of many Serb civilians, including children, consented to the dropping of depleted uranium shells across Serbia, causing huge increases in cancer rates, played a pivotal role in the demonization of the Serbs, and who was and remains a staunch friend to the rancid KLA. Blair is the man who Vucic flies into Belgrade, treats lavishly, and pays for his advice. Well, let me tell you this. If I had my own way, the only time Blair would be in Belgrade would be to stand trial in a court of law and sentenced to life imprisonment for his crimes against Serbian civilians. The West's political control over Serbia has made Blair a guest in the very country which he mercilessly 
bombed and derided for 72 days. And let us also be aware that Vucic also meets regularly with Bill Clinton and poses for photographs with this depraved, degenerate, Serb-hating former American president who claims that God told him to bomb Serbia. Also, Vucic has donated millions of dollars to the Clinton Foundation, a foundation that has a visceral disliking of all things Serbian, is a staunch supporter of Kosovan independence, and supports the KLA. Vucic didn't think it right, instead, to donate that money to Serb families whose members were murdered by NATO because Vucic serves the interests of the West and not the interests of Serbia. Vucic talks, laughs, wines and dines with Clinton, who is responsible for many Serbs now lying in graves, including children. If I had my own way, the only time I would touch Clinton's filthy hand would be to put him in handcuffs and put him on trial in Belgrade. Blair flying in and out of Belgrade at his leisure and photographs of Clinton with the Serbian president is symbolic of how of the political hold that the West now exerts over Serbia. But a tangible demonstration of the West's political occupation of Serbia can be found in how the accursed NATO has supervisory offices, let me say that again, supervisory offices in key Serbian state institutions, including the Defence Ministry, whose building was partially destroyed by NATO in 1999. In fact, NATO's presence in Serbia has rapidly increased under Vucic, and staying with the Serbian military, Another of the first acts of the pro-Western Quislets after the overthrow of Milosevic was to diminish the size and power of the once vaunted Serbian armed forces because the West understood that the Serbian military had the power to topple its lackeys in Belgrade, hence the Serbian military had to be decapitated, so to speak. And so, the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia under Milosevic were over 100,000 strong, but today the Serbian military stands at a pitiful 30,000. And if that is not bad enough, I have spoken with Serbian military officials who told me that Serb soldiers have to buy boots for themselves from local markets because the Serb army can't afford to provide these to its soldiers. They like British, right? Hmm? Similar to British. <laughs> well, it's the British are the party behind this. Then there was the 2006 Montenegrin independence referendum, <coughs> which the then treacherous Serbian president, Boris Tadic, was instructed by the West to hold. In order to weaken and help subdue Serbia even further, the West moved to break Montenegro away from Serbia. Tadic was, in, was instructed by his Western masters to hold a referendum and to accept the falsified result. And it certainly was falsified because, after all, not every Serb is a Montenegrin, but every Montenegrin is a Serb. And of course, the West needed its puppet in Montenegro, the dreaded Milo Djuganovic, to be part of the treacherous action. And this vile creature was only too willing, only too willing to be involved so that he could, over, he could have his own kingdom under the auspices of the West. Djuganovic is to Montenegro what Vucic is to Serbia, an enemy within. But going back to Tadic, he severed Montenegro away from Serbia because he was under the political control of the West. 20 years ago, it would have been unthinkable for a Serbian president to devise a plan to detach Montenegro from Serbia. But alas, that is what Serbian traitors have done and that is another demonstration of the political occupation of Serbia by the West. Returning to Vucic, the Serbian president has, gone, has even gone as far as to acknowledge the West's politically motivated claim that the Bosnian Serbs committed genocide against the Bosnian Muslims at Srebrenica in the summer of 1995. Srebrenica is the foundation for the West's so-called policy of humanitarian intervention. And by instructing Vucic to acknowledge in public that the Bosnian Serbs carried out genocide, 
is not, a, is not only a monumental blow to the honour and morale of the Serb people, but it is also a global PR and media victory for the West, who can turn around to their citizens and say that, we told you that the Serbs committed genocide, and now even their own president says so. Serbs know that what happened at Srebrenica in July 1995 was not genocide, and so too do many older Bosnian Muslims. Further to that, Dr. Efrem Zurov, the director of the Simon Wiesenthal Center in Jerusalem, has argued that there was no genocide at Srebrenica. But that Vucic has said that the Bosnian Serbs committed genocide, thus confirming the Western narrative, is another demonstration of how he and the rest of the Serbian political elite are working for the West and how Serbia is polit politically occupied by the West. Vucic and the rest of the Serbian elite are puppets whose strings are pulled by Washington and Brussels. Finally, let me turn to how Serbian foreign policy is under the political control of the West and how it covertly supports the West's objectives on the international stage. Despite, firstly, despite Vucic claiming that Serbia adheres to a policy of non-alignment, no one in the world of realpolitik is fooled by that, especially the Russians. I will cite just one example of the West's control over Serbian foreign policy. Despite Syria and Serbia having long and close relations with each other, which were established under Tito, Serbian state arms manufacturers sell weapons to Saudi Arabia, knowing that the Saudis will then send these weapons to Islamist terrorist groups fighting in Syria, such as Al-Qaeda and ISIS. Utterly stomach-turning. Saudi arms dealers are regularly in Belgrade. Serbian weapons in the hands of Islamists, killing Syrian civilians, soldiers and police officers. My friends in Syria, be it political friends, journalists, in the army, the police, regularly find Serbian weapons in bunkers which have been controlled by ISIS or Al-Qaeda. The Serbs and the Syrians have a common enemy in the form of Islamism. Serbs battle Islamists in Bosnia and also in Kosovo, while the Syrians have battled them inside Syria. And yet, the treacherous Serbian elite are being used by their masters in the West to support an Islamist terrorist campaign against a historic friend of Serbia's. Alas, the political occupation by the West of Serbia is utterly conclusive. Now onto the West's cultural occupation of Serbia. The Serbs are a hugely proud and patriotic people whose love of their culture, religion and land was the defining factor in Serbia liberating itself from the Ottoman Empire, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the German Empire and the Nazi Empire. Indeed, the key reason as to why NATO did not launch a ground invasion of Serbia in 1999 was that American generals advised the degenerate Clinton on the ferocious fighting abilities of the Serb people and the ability of the Serbs to endure hardships which most people in the world would be unable to withstand. So, after the overthrow of Milosevic, the West began a process of trying to weaken Serbian culture by introducing an alien culture into the country. Washington and Brussels acutely understand that if you dilute and eventually eliminate a people's culture, then you will have effectively killed their national identity, meaning their patriotic fervor is no longer alive, is no longer alive, and thus their colonial governors will reign without resistance. Now, that method of erasing a people's culture takes many years to achieve, but it will be achieved if it goes unchecked in Serbia. Because, Serbia, because Serbian culture is under attack from Western inserted values and lifestyles, and the treacherous Serbian political elite are facilitating the imposing of Western values and lifestyles in Serbia. All you need do is turn on a television set in Serbia and you'll be confronted by reality television programs, celebrity culture programs, and materialistic programs 
which promote money and high life living over spiritualism? Are those te television programs which I just cited part of Serbian culture? Certainly not. They are part of American and British cultures, which I will add are decadent cultures. Serbian television viewers were not so long ago exposed to a reality television program based on their British and American counterparts in which an elderly man had sex with a much younger woman in full view of the cameras. In full view of the cameras. Serbia is Serbia. Keep that in Britain. Keep that in America. That is not Serbian culture. That is evidence of a sick and depraved foreign culture whose home is in America and in Britain. I remember Serbian television once airing documentaries about Serbian history, about the Serbian Orthodox Church, about the Yugoslav partisans and sports programs, for instance. But the programs, but these programs now take second place as the West and its servile collaborators in Belgrade look to undermine Serbian culture in a bid to safeguard Serbia's status as a vassal state of the West. Then there is the endless building of shopping centres in Belgrade by Vucic and Brnovic, which are full of Western chain stores, encouraging Serbs to embrace the Western culture of retail and consumerism, which is central to the, to the materialistic culture of the Americans and the British. Together with those shopping centres, are Western-style gyms, which have sprung up across Belgrade with the objective of introducing another aspect of American and British culture into Serbia, whereby it is stylish to work out with the aim of looking like an American or British pornographic star or glamour model, or having the beach bodies of American or British celebrities, which of course involves the taking of drugs, and drugs are now a growing problem in Serbia. So that is how Serbia is occupied by the West, political, economic and cultural, and all are just as dangerous as each other. There is nothing to be proud of in today's Serbia. For pride, Serbs have to look to their glorious past. But it is in, the, but it is in Serbian history where our hope lies for Serbia in freeing itself from the shackles of Western occupation. The Serbs defeated some of the most powerful empires the world has ever known. The Ottoman, the Austro-Hungarian, the Imperial German and the Nazi. Thus, the Serbs can defeat the Western Empire. But, as I said at the beginning of my speech, Western colonialism is insidious and less overt than previous forms of, co of colonialism which Serbia has been a victim of. Because unless Serbs come together, regardless of their political affiliations, to overthrow and destroy the Western system controlling them, then Serbia, its people and its culture will perish, and the country will be devoid of identity and will resemble places like Dubai or Abu Dhabi, empty, uncultured, meaningless and artificial. My plan for Serbia, in short, would involve the following. The overthrow and destruction of the Western system that has enslaved Serbs since the 5th of October 2000. The instalment of politicians who are patriotic and who will dedicate themselves to serving Serbia's national interests, not their own. The renationalisation of Serbia's industries and natural resources. The immediate expulsion of NATO and EU officials from the country. A strict policy of non-alignment whereby Serbia trades with the West, has excellent all-round relations with Russia, and resurrects its old ties with countries such as Cuba, India, Egypt, Algeria, Ethiopia, Syria, and Indonesia. Enhancing relations with China, making education, health, welfare, and defense key priorities. Ending the presence of Western culture in Serbia, instructing the Serbian Orthodox Church to work towards the unity of the Serbian people and encourage Serbian patriotism. No compromise on Kosovo and Matokia and no meetings with the bandits occupying this Serbian province 
and no meetings with the supporters of the bandits over the future of this province. Prosecuting in a court of law the traitors who have been working for the West and exploring the possibility of creating a new entity involving Serbia, Montenegro, Republic of Srpska and perhaps Macedonia. Allow me to say a few words about traitors. They speak a familiar language. They speak with a familiar accent. They have familiar physical features. They have familiar mannerisms. They have familiar names. And they have familiar habits. But they are motivated only by their self-interests in life. And to achieve this, they will betray their own country and their own people, even their own family and friends. They constitute a monumental danger and far exceed the dangers posed by enemies. The Serbian political elite, from Vucic and Brnovic to the so-called opposition, have betrayed Serbia to the West on a scale never seen before in Serbian history. And they must be stopped before Serbia becomes a skeleton. We still have time on our side to save Serbia. Although exceedingly dangerous, the Western system controlling Serbia has not, as of yet, penetrated the Serbian soul. As long as Serbia's soul remains alive, then the Western system is not secure. But we must act fast, because the Western cancer is moving fast across Serbia, and its ultimate objective is to surround and kill the Serbian soul. Strength through unity is how Serbia will be saved. Let us not fail in saving Serbia, and let us not disgrace ourselves before the mighty ghosts from Serbia's past who never wavered in their resolve to free Serbia from foreign occupation. Puno Vam Vala. Well, he's one of us now. Uh, I think it's very important that we hear somebody else, not only us. Uh, but uh, if you have any question, I think Marcus is going to answer. I have a question. Um, well, over the last, let's say, year, they were about, like NATO, America, they were about to attack North Korea, and they shifted to Venezuela, now they are talking about Iran. What we are seeing that an anti-American coalition is gaining ground. And even China, who was like resort, like very reserved, you now they're coming more from me. And obviously there is um, like competition between them, who is going to get who is going to suck all these small countries with them. And the situation in the Balkans I watched uh, Russian TV, not this RT, but some Russian program, when Maria Elena Muscova was talking about soft power in Serbia, how they need to do something, you know. But then I'm highly disappointed with their choice of journalists and what they are saying is not historically correct. And where are they taking Serbia from there, I'm not really clear. Do you think that these like events are developing rapidly around Iran now? Do you think it may speed up this situation in Serbia where Russia and China would be like more into that preventing the plan for Balkans? Uh, no, is the short answer. First of all, only Serbs can save Serbia. No one is going to do that for you. Yeah. You have to do it yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Number two, regarding China, the Chinese economy is interlocked with the American economy. The progress that China has made over the last 40 years, began beginning with Deng Xiaoping, has been nothing short of a miracle. And I'm highly impressed by the Chinese. But if China is on its feet following the collapse, Communism, following the end of the Soviet Union, 
Russia's priority, number one priority, is what the Russians call the near abroad, which is the former Soviet states. Ukraine, Belarus, Central Asia, Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan. After the former Soviet states, what's crucial for Russia is the Middle East and North Africa. Then China, then Latin America and Africa. Sorry to say that the Balkans, Serbia, it's not a priority for Russia. It's not that Russia doesn't want to help, it has to prioritize. And Russia does not have much leverage in Serbia. However, if the Serbs come together and overthrow that rotten Western system, then there will be an opportunity to establish a strong relationship with Russia, which will benefit both countries. But Serbia still must be non-aligned. Russia is a genuine friend, but Russia has self-interests. So no China and Russia are not going to come together to bankrupt America. Indeed, a very close friend of mine in the Kremlin told me a story many years ago how, about how a senior Russian politician traveled to Beijing and sat down with his Chinese equivalent. And the Russian politician said to his Chinese equivalent, let's get together, Russia and China, and we can bankrupt America. The Chinese politician looked at the Russian and said, are you mad? If we bankrupt America, then China's going to be bankrupt. So the short answer is Serbs have to do it on their own. Then there's an opportunity for forming new friendships in the world and resurrecting old friendships. Can I ask a question, please? Um, as you compared Western influence in Serbia to a cancer, uh, and in cancer patients, if they treated with chemotherapy, to get rid of the cancer, if they're not strong enough, they die. Serbia's not strong enough um, to chemo the Western influence out. So uh, how, do, how, how do we build our immunity to actually, you know, what's the alternative medicine? You know, what, what's, the, what's, the, what's the way to actually get that strength to fight, to, to, to go with the chemo? Well, my answer, my question is, what's the alternative? a slave yep. indefinitely. I mean, don't tell me that Serbs weren't having this discussion when Serbia was controlled by the Turks. Don't tell me they were, because they were. Don't tell me when the Serbs were confronted with the Austro-Hungarians, with the German Empire, with the Nazi Empire, they weren't saying, oh, we're up against such powerful, potent forces, and we're just a small country with a small people. How do we do it? You have something inside of you that many other people in the world don't have. You have this result. You have this extraordinary level of stamina. I know that the Serbs are exhausted after 30 years of being targeted by the British and the Americans. I know that. I know they're despondent. I know that they're depressed. But what they need is an alternative ideology. What they need is another, is an alternative form of leadership. And it has to be proved. It has to be fought out. And I believe that if that argument is made, and if that sort of, if that campaign um, utilizes the Serbian diaspora across the world, then I think a lot of Serbs will feel different. But the brutal reality is, there is no alternative apart from Serbia eventually dying and being corpse being a skeleton. Don't underestimate what you have inside of you. Uh, Hi, thank you for your time. Uh, I enjoyed your speech. Uh, it's very symbolic you uh, agree um, because it's you speaking to us because not many people know that uh, the first uprising of Serbs was actually financed by Greeks and done in cooperation. Uh, some of the right hand men of uh, Kurt Georgia were actually Greeks and they fought, you know, side to side. Yes. So, thank you again. Uh, the thing that I want to ask is that, you, for example, you, you listed the countries that want to align the pact, which were essentially friendly to Yugoslavia. And you're talking about this period where, you know, you're saying for 30 years we've, we've 
called tortured and whatnot, demonized. But I think we should look a little bit further back, because right? I, I think you'll find the majority of the people here, or like at least some, are actually descendants of people who had to leave Yugoslavia or Serbia or Bosnia because of communism. So the reason I bring this up is because Serbs were essentially demonized within their own country, first by fascists or Nazis, and then the communists right after, and then essentially their grandchildren, which are now this so-called elite, uh, direct descendants of these communists. And this might sound far-fetched, but if, if you chat, I can actually show you, like, you know, for example, the lady uh, who is now the strongest ambassador of NATO in Serbia is actually a daughter of a uh, you know, Yugoslav-era general. So, for example, this, this sort of like um, attitude where you are uh, seen as enlightened if you hate yourself, I think it is a sort of like a phenomenon that exists in Serbia, like uh, as auto-chauvinism. So I, I think there's a, there's a bigger problem that exists within Serbia. And I mean, I'm just asking for exactly the same thing, like what can we do to fight this? But I don't think this problem exists only 30 years back. I think it's much deeper, it has deeper roots. So what do you think about that? Well, look, I mean, we need to have a look at it. It's the literature that was coming out of Germany, right. here in Germany, at the beginning of the 20th century, and uh, Austro-Hungary at the beginning of the 20th, 20th century, whereby Serbs were portrayed as almost subhuman. So you're, you're absolutely right, this is not, uh, this targeting of Serbs is not a phenomenon, a new phenomenon. Um, Regarding what you said about uh, communism, regarding what you said about monarchists, look, that was then, okay? This is now. We cannot allow divisions to divide us. Because I remember in 1999, when the Serbian king, or the, or the Serb king who believes he's king, not once took to the television set in Britain to condemn NATO's aggression against Serbia. Why did he not do that? This is the man who believes he should be king of Serbia, and yet he lives over here, and he never condemned NATO's aggression. He has never called for Blair, for Clinton, to be put, to be put in an, into an international court of law. So I hear what you're saying, but I don't think going back decades and decades is going to achieve anything. If anything, if anything, it will play into the hands of the Americans and the British, because the British in particular, the masters, are divide and rule. I'm a supporter of Yugoslavia, I'm a staunch supporter of Tito, but I'm not going to say that he didn't make serious mistakes. He did make serious mistakes. The 1974 constitution was a serious mistake. Uh, the system was based on him. He never thought about what happens after he dies. There were serious mistakes. But let's also acknowledge that under Tito, Serbs, everyone in Yugoslavia had something they never had before, a level of security and stability, homes, jobs, pensions, literacy, okay? Was it perfect? No, it wasn't. Let's have a look in the kingdom of Yugoslavia. What a socially unjust country. Look at the levels of Illiteracy. I mean, one difference between the Kingdom of Yugoslavia and Socialist Yugoslavia is that the judicial system in the Kingdom was far more impartial than how it was under Tito. I mean, that's absolutely true, and that was better. But, you know, there are good aspects and bad aspects with all systems, okay? But I don't think it helps today's court to go back to what happened my point 70 wasn't, years ago. My point wasn't to be pro-monarchist or an anti-communist. Uh -huh. My point was that this cancer that you're talking about has deeper roots. So I think that the people who are now being servile to the West, they're actually just continuing. They're, they're not this new way. They're maybe like a second or third way. And like you, you touched upon you know, this propaganda that uh, Austria and uh -huh. Germany serve. This propaganda was actually adopted by academic and intellectual elite in Yugoslavia during the uh, kingdom of Yugoslavia and, and used to sort of to say, yes, we are lectured, look, we can relate to our colleagues 
you know, from the West. So, so I think that this problem has much deeper roots and it will take much longer to sort of like root out. Well, trade is one yeah. didn't start, it didn't emerge in Serbia in October 2000. Uh, I know that. They've always been there. The Balkans is a very, very complicated region. And of course, it's a geostrategic region. That is why there's always been so much foreign interest. And you're absolutely fine. right. These people do have, uh, do have ancestors who are doing very similar things, but I still stand by my contention that the ones today are the worst in the history of Serbia. I agree with you. Hi, sorry. Um, very quick question. Um, you mentioned Serbia being and the family had to come to England when they were little boys. My father has always been here supporting all of the Serb people. In the 90s, he, I went to Yugoslavia before and I came back and I was still alive. So my father decided he was going to go back to Yugoslavia where his dream and his heart was. He, till the day he died, he supported all the Yugoslavs because he was still in Yugoslavia and he considered himself as a Serb in Yugoslavia. He was there throughout the whole of the time of the Troubles. He went down to Bosnia. He went to all the different camps. He saw exactly what was happening down there, which actually broke his heart. Um, he had a huge amount of the Yugoslav people coming to visit him on a daily basis when he was living at Oplanat. Uh, and even to the day that he died, at his funeral, there were several hundred thousand people there at the funeral. But you're right, unfortunately, the person who believes he should be king, feels today he should still be king, and he was a great supporter in different ways, um, but it was my father who was there throughout the whole time of the travels, supporting and doing what he could for the Serbian and the Yugoslav people. Oh, um, it's a very interesting story. Um, my father was Prince Thomas Lark. I mean, look, I'm an avid anti-monarchist, it's as simple as that, but that is irrelevant. Serbia is a republic, and rightly yes, so, he was and rightly so, and, 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 and rightly so, I appreciate what you said, let me speak now. It doesn't matter if a Serb is a supporter of a monarchy, or if a Serb is a supporter of a republic. Put those differences aside, come together, and unite against the most dangerous threat that Serbia's ever faced, equal to the threat posed by the Nazis. Well, and many other Serbs have tried yeah. as well, okay? Because someone uh, is from a, a monarchist background, it doesn't mean they're any better than anyone else. It doesn't matter, it doesn't mean if a Serb is from a Republican background or a Communist background, that he's any better than someone from a monarchist background. At the end of the day, you are all Serbs. All that matters is Serbia's independence, freedom and the security of its people. That is all that matters. There are pros and cons, there were pros and cons in the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, okay? There were pros and cons in Tito's Yugoslavia. And that is life. But, you know, let's dispense with these divisions, let's come together and let's recognise the threat that is posed by the British and the Americans, the West. Yes, sir. he went there before the troubles yeah. and he wanted to be there and he was actually the only person out of the family. Yes. And I'm sorry, I'm standing up now and I am the one who is now here helping and supporting to keep the Serbs together and making I us... I appreciate that and I know, I know, that 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 I know many of the Serbs yes. in Britain and outside Britain who are doing That's exactly that. the same work as yourself. And I encourage that. My and I support have to do it because I, no other member I, well, of the family was doing well, it. Of his family. But of course, I know many Serbs from Serbia, the rest of the former Yugoslavia, Serbs in Australia, who were doing exactly the same <coughs> kind of work. 
And I think to put, to put someone on a, on a pedestal, to put someone higher than other Serbs, once again, I think is utterly disrespectful. And number two, plays into the hands of Serbia's enemies. Hi, Max, lovely to see you. Thank you for your compassion. Right, also, well, in Greek secret, I suppose you can empathize with what's going on. Half, half, uh, half, okay. half. Right, um, okay, how do you explain the fact that, um, you see, the, uh, so, well, Serbia was supported by the West uh, in the first and second world yeah. wars, we were allies. And, I mean, you know, you, you can see the Serbian esteem is very wounded, very hurt. And um, also, we, we, did, we feel deeply betrayed by the West, especially what's happening in Yugoslavia. And the fact, how could the, the fact, when, actually, who was the Tito? How come he was Croat after, if, like, how do you explain the fact that Serbia carried the, the fights for the West, you know, wins all the wars, and then in the end loses everything? And I think one of the results of what's happening now in Serbia is basically Serbs, I think, they were, because they were deeply betrayed, I think they lost. It's like, it's like what, well, you know, it's, they don't have the support that they deserve and the voice that, you know, in a way, you know, you, you, you were the voice of heart and soul that it's, forget, it's forgotten. I feel it's lost, of, you know. And um, so I think, yeah, so yes, I think Serbia felt that maybe if they now go with the West, that, you know, they might get kind of the, the backup that they need. So I think I, yeah, I think there's lots of conflict, conflicting things going on, and this is just because the history, lots of history, is written by the winners and, and lie and fake. So it's quite difficult to actually understand. Well, you know, in, in, regards order to heal. Of, in regards to Serbia going with the West, I take I take your meaning to Serbia joining the European Union, for example. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, um, many countries in the region were promised paradise if they join the European Union. Countries like Hungary, Bulgaria, Romania, and indeed Ukraine, which is an artificial country. Ukraine, which is an artificial country, is being promised a new beginning if they join the EU. Paradise. Great salaries, great jobs, great homes. Well, let's just have a look at what's happened to Hungary, for example. And a very good friend of mine standing there, Chris, is Hungarian. Hungary has some of the most fertile land in Europe. And you can feed the since, yes, since joining the EU, Hungary now imports potatoes from Spain and garlic from China. Now, a Cypriot gentleman here today, Cyprus, once again, can grow pretty much anything, any, any vegetables, fruit. But now, today, Cyprus imports tomatoes, grapes, apples, peaches from Spain, Italy, France, because it's in the European Union. So if you think bad, if you think the economic situation in Serbia is bad today, which it is, it will become tremendously worse should Serbia join the EU. The EU is a rich man's club. Britain, Germany, France, Italy, they benefit tremendously from being in the EU, partly through exploiting the smaller countries, the weaker economies. That is happening in Croatia. Croatia uh, has lost many of its national industries, which were formed under Tito. A lot of its national resources have gone. They're experiencing, they're experiencing the same thing as well. So I do not believe that Serbia's future lies in the West. I mean, one thing some Serbian politicians, opposition, in inverted commas have said to me, is that Marcus, Serbia is surrounded by the EU, Serbia is surrounded by NATO, we don't have any choice. Well, since when has Serbia not been surrounded by foreign forces? <coughs> Federal Republic, Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia was surrounded by NATO and the Warsaw Pact. What did Tito do? He said, no, we're going to be independent. <coughs> we're going to have relations with both. We're going to take advantage of the division in the world, the ideological division in the world that time. But who was Tito? He was half Croat, half Slovenian, who believed in Yugoslavia. You kept it together. My question is that you were talking about your plan to sort of salvage Serbia while there's still time. Yeah. Um, you know, I, you talked about installing a patriotic government. I'd, I'd be 
fully for that more in Britain. I, you know, I'm dismayed at the <laughs> decline in patriotism in Britain through globalisation, <laughs> through things like the EU. Yes. You know, it's yeah. it's Absolutely. terrible. You you see it all the time. But you know, I, I thought your sort of uh, phrasing of that was quite interesting. Installing a patriotic government. If you put that to the people and it fell at the first hurdle, I'm just playing devil's advocate. There is a new generation of people in Serbia. You know, a younger generation that probably like the globalisation, like the American culture. You know, right. if you put that to the people and they, you know, they rejected it out of hand first time. You're installing a patriotic government. What, what form would that take? Well, that wasn't just one part of what I put forward as a plan for Serbia. Simultaneously, simultaneously, you have to tackle this alien culture, which is now in Serbia. You have to get rid of that. You have to. You have to re-educate the youth. The youth are victims. It's not their fault. You know, I'm in Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia had one of the best education systems in Europe. It was a great system. It was the envy of many countries in the region. But that system has fallen to pieces since October 2000. That needs to be rebuilt. The, edu the, the, the people today who are in their 20s, they need to be... They need to be approached, they need to be sat down with, there needs to be a nationwide campaign. They have to be told the reality about who has been running them, who has been ruling them for all these years. If we get the education system right eventually, then we guarantee future generations. But education is absolutely crucial in all of this. They have to be told that celebrity culture that reality TV program, that is not Serbian culture. They have to be told that. And I do believe they will respond positively. But these Serbs in their 20s, they, they are victims of a broken education system. Some of you may know this, but not so long ago, a textbook appeared in some Serbian uh, high schools claiming that Kosovo had never actually been Serbian. <laughs> I should probably have said the education system also has is also controlled by the West. They have to make sure that young Serbs learn what the West wants them to know. Okay. Yeah. One side and one question. Just on the, uh, the side is that yes, we're all created equal, or should be, and so on and so forth. However, some families are more high profile than others, and it's actually more influential than others, and also they could be more targeted than others. So if, uh, when uh, Yugoslavia was dismembered by the West in the early 90s, uh, a royal had spoken up and been uh, very much against this, that's a courageous act. Equally, it's uh, one that they, most of them fell at that hurdle, and I would just uh, commend uh, Princess Katrina's father, Prince Tomislav, who I saw in 1994 in the uh, parlor and in Bari Luka, in those areas of the Republic of Srpska, he stood out and did his bit for the Serbian people that he supported here for decades, through all that period when there seemed to be no chance of any uh, benefit uh, to his activities. He did those activities, and we should all recognize what he did. Absolutely. And, and, and as I say, the efforts of all Serbs. Absolutely. Absolutely. The point is this. That uh, a, a, a Serb who is not of that profile will not be targeted as a result of that kind of activity. He took the risk of being uh, public enemy number two in the West by uh, actually going everywhere and making himself visible. So his effort in that sense was more than perhaps mine or his or someone else's at the time, uh, is what I was saying. Well, that's I, I, I think that's one opinion. I think many Serbs in the 1990s, including in the 80s, when like problems were really began to cost We had lots of actors, but I was saying that someone of high profile, formal profile, will be targeted if he takes steps that support the demonized Serbs. So to do that required a degree of more bravery than perhaps us in the church at that point would have had to show to support our... I, I, think, I think there's many people who have come from humble backgrounds who have done far more than any royal family. What I'm saying is, 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 is they won't have been targeted uh, for that. Whereas uh, someone who's high profile who does that, we've seen anyone who takes a suicide like you, you've been targeted because you're high profile. And that's why we're sitting here today. So the point is, by being high profile, you are taking a risk of adopting a pro serving stance. And my point is that what applies to you applies also to the world. And uh, the only world who passed the test 
in my opinion, was continuous diet. All well, that's why all serves regardless of their political affiliation. And also, very quickly, following what Michael has been saying, my father was offered the crown of uh, Republika Srpska, but he refused it. Okay. Now, just moving on uh, to the question, actually, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, your program of national unity and reconciliation is laudable. We all love it. We have now much want a reality TV drug induced Serbia going the Hayes to some kind of American uh, swamp where they're going to end up nobody's with no territory beyond uh, the regions of Belgrade. However, I mean, there is a difference between the position of the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia and the current Serbia. And that is that Serbia is now back to where it was 100 years ago. It's completely landlocked. It's now the, the only wind pipe Serbia has is the Danube. So effectively, uh, the West is not going to stand idly by while we uh, actually discover ourselves and res restore ourselves to normality. So he will do everything to stop that. Yes. And what I'm saying is, can we implement such a program in a situation where we have NATO and EU countries all around us uh, who will be advised by the New World hegemon to actually take action? And we also have minorities within our own country who can be um, mobilized against such a movement of national uh, return. Not be um, you're, you're right. You know, what I said today is, is in no way a simple or easy task. It is going to be a tremendously difficult task. But look to your history. You achieved it against the Ottomans. Why can't you achieve it today? It's a different sort of occupation, as I said, but it can be done. You, overcome, you overcame the Austro-Hungarians. What you need is unity. What the West fears is unity. The British, in particular, but also the Americans, their tactic is divide and rule. Unless Serbs come together, then Serbia will remain enslaved to the British and to the Americans. We need so much, there are so many components which are going to be required for this. Unity is at the core of this. An alternative ideology, can I an education you, system. Can I ask you, uh, the insidious cancer from coming from America and England, maybe Germany and France as well, right. to me is, you seem to have focused on Serbia, but I think it is insidious in the whole of Europe. And having the opportunity to spend a few winters in France and a few winters since I retired in Spain, I see that insidiousness in the Spanish, last week I was in Spain, in the Spanish television, in the Spanish drugs culture, on the entire my own world. So, although I agree with you emphasizing it here, how do you combat that insidious cancer that comes from America and England? Not just in Serbia, <coughs> but a return to a culture. If you don't have a culture, how can you assist it? You no, more specific. Culture. More specific. This is what we are going to do this afternoon. This is what we're going to do tomorrow. This is what we're going to do next next week. I sit like you very often and think, oh, if I would have power, I would do this, 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 this. But I have. Similar to a business plan, when you make a business plan, the bank says, can I see your business plan? Can I see your business plan? Okay, I'm I'm gonna can I answer that? There has to be okay. an ideology. There has Some to be of you do not know me. No, no, no. no, no I'm not good. interested in what you're saying. I'm interested in this. And that's why we can't succeed. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm a secretary of the Serbian Society. Okay, The only charitable organization in this country who maintains the culture. At several years, really bad spell, run to the ground completely. For the past year, we've been trying to pick ourselves up and organize the culture. And we can't. We can't because the finances are blocked, because the trust has been shattered. None of our people in London want to become members anymore. No one is attending to uh, various events. My child, for once, doesn't speak language. 
Okay? Mine I'm does. I'm as well. So, the first step, and I hope you will agree with this, the first step is the culture. Okay? Maintain that culture. Let's get all together. Let's put that Serbian society all back on the feet. We already had several events where we talked about Middle uh, Ages Serbian culture that I didn't learn, never mind the younger generations. Let's start building our identity again, building our culture, maintaining our culture, okay, but and I, spreading okay. it around. That's how we win. Okay, next. Uh, next. I think that's, that's, that's the one. One. Excuse me, yeah. thank you. Uh, yeah. Mr. Koromedis, uh, yes. I'm a Greek Cypriot for those who don't know me. Now, I want to ask you, the whole thing here is really the result of globalization, isn't it? Now, they, they decided that they want to control the world. And first, they started, they broke down into, uh, obviously, a big unit like Yugoslavia. It was not good for them. They had to be broken into different republics that one by one can be attached to the European Union and uh, NATO and so on. Um, the, uh, I remember during the time that Cyprus was invaded by Turkey and Greece was feeling very strongly uh, against the Americans, they, Kissinger said, hit them and their culture. That we really, you know, uh, uh, finished them. And we can see now there is the effect of the uh, attack of the culture, whether it's in Greece, in Cyprus, in uh, Serbia, and everywhere. Uh, in uh, Macedonia, they, they wanted, obviously, to remove the influence of Russia, uh, or maybe China, I don't know, from Macedonia. They uh, invested maybe 50 million uh, there, and uh, uh, even in Greece, they gave another 50 million or a sort of money to be uh, used uh, for the purpose of bringing Macedonia within the Western sphere. They did it by hook and by crook. They have paid 100,000 pounds for each member of the parliament to vote for you know, the uh, change of the government uh, to what it is now and to, to something that the people themselves didn't want to know. They looked people in the, in the parliament and they told them if they didn't agree to vote the way they wanted them to vote, they would put their children into prison, they would put them into prison, and so on and so forth. And uh, therefore, we are against a very big power that wants to control the world. And uh, it, it, I, I remember in the 50s, when we were fighting for our freedom from Britain, the people were poor and they were really fighting. They had something to fight for. Uh, subsequently, with the independence when Britain gave us an, a, a constitution that wouldn't work, and they knew it wouldn't work for the last 53 years. Afterwards, as well, they, uh, they, they put a lot of money in Cyprus, and money corrupts. And the same in Serbia, money corrupts. The same in Macedonia, money corrupts. And people say, well, if I have 100,000 in my account, you know, what I'm going to worry now about. I mean, uh, uh, this change, change would have happened anyway. You're not, not responsible for it. I'm only one person. <laughs> uh, this is what is happening. And this is why people uh, will not fight like in the uh, uh, 18th and when Greece got up to, to fight against uh, Turkey and so on and so forth. And in those days, they were also uh, supporting them the West. Uh, so they, they you don't have the West against them. Uh, in the 1940s, that you know, we fought against the Germans, all uh, communists and right wing. They all fought together in Greece to, uh, to, to uh, you know, against the Nazis. As long as they were fighting, it was lovely. As soon as they, they, they decided that uh, Greece would become part of the Western influence, Britain brings 8,000 soldiers in, in Greece and starts. The, uh, uh, clearing up of all the companies. What is your question? Sorry? What is your question? No, no. as an observation, no, no, background, okay. which I agree with. Okay. Okay. But me sure. yeah. uh, There has been here talk of the 5th of October, you mentioned 2000, uh -huh. right? Uh, again and again. 
Can I mention a particular date nine years earlier, the 18th of October, Lord Carrington <coughs> brought a meeting to the, to the Hague and all the leaders of the six republics and his proposal was dissolution of Yugoslavia. Maybe you don't know about it, well, but that is a very critical I'm idea. Here, I'm here, Peter. Uh, one man, however, did not accept it. His name was Milosevic. Uh, later on, Mr. Bulatovic mm -hmm. also did not accept it. And as a result of that was the formation of the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. All the others accepted it. But it is a result of not accepting the dissolution of one's own state that people have given loyalty to, Serbia and Milosevic, in other words, got sanctions. Soon, these sanctions were to be the severest sanctions in UN history. This was in 1992, the 30th of, uh, uh, of May 1992. And it will interest you also how the, the whole system has been running because uh, the, uh, the uh, situation was that uh, uh, the resolution 757 of the United Nations was a, against, uh, they stated against to the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, but then all the media here were to have it as sanctions against Milosevic. One did, in fact, the same, you know, equation sign, Milosevic, Yugoslavia, Serbia. In 1999, I had to listen 50 times a day how they were bombing Milosevic, they were bombing schools, hospitals, churches, the uh, central television, uh, TV television in Belgrade bombed 16 media workers murdered. One has to deal with very powerful countries and one has to find one's way through it. But what I want to say is that if one looks at what has happened, Serbia, or the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, was the only state in Europe that put up any resistance towards NATO expansion eastwards. Mm -hmm. Even the Soviet Union collapsed. So I think that needs to be acknowledged when one looks at the situation of that. It had also to be punished, and it has been punished. So you need to take that into account when we speak about the West and Serbia. Well, i just tell you something. Leaving aside that the United States can destroy the world 10 times over, that the UK and, the, and France have nuclear weapons, in terms of gross domestic product, I'm quoting here the, 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 uh, the World Bank, uh, the United States has 525 <coughs> times the product in the bank, if you like, that the uh, Federal Republic of Yugoslavia had during the bombing period. And overall, the 19 NATO countries have 1,060 times. So that is what you're up against. Uh, we are up against mighty close right. And uh, one has to take into account and actually also see the difficulties, even that people like Vucic are in, right? But this is what they're dealing with. They're not dealing with uh, Kosovo Albanians, right? They're dealing us with uh, parties who are effectively being but sponsored. But Vucic doesn't right? have to fly a plane to Belgrade, does he? Yeah. No, this is acceptable. This, this is, that, that, all I mean, of us were very, very upset. Very, very quickly. First of all, the Soviet Union didn't collapse, it was dissolved. Mm -hmm. And number two, Milosevic resisted the breakup of Yugoslavia because there were Serbs, substantial Serbs, as we all know, in Bosnia and in Croatia. Mm -hmm. And the West denied them the right of self determination. They gave the Muslims and the Croats the right of self determination. Mm -hmm. So Milosevic was right to resist the break of Yugoslavia. And I know my Croatian Serb friends will agree with that. But also, Peter Carrington said this, and not many people know this. He said it to me in private, but he's also on records having said this. It was the actions of the Europeans who ignited that war in Croatia and Bosnia. He said it with regard to Bosnia, the Croatian of Bosnia. Croatia, Croatia and Bosnia.